Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in the video today, that time a guy landed a helicopter on the summit of Everest. To many climbers, mountaineers, and general fans of low oxygen environments, summiting Mount Everest represents the literal peak of human achievement. But while an impressive feat for a human, it turns out vultures can happily survive exposed to altitudes of 40,000 feet or 12,200 meters above sea level, and indeed have been sighted flying around at this height. For reference, this is about 11,000 feet or 3,350 meters above the peak of Everest. Meanwhile, tardigrades laugh in the face of the conditions on Everest able to survive even nakedly exposed to outer space for quite some time with no ill effects. Although, do note here that humans can actually be exposed to the near vacuum of space for about 90 seconds without any long-term damage, but we have nothing on the tardigrade for durability in just about any environment. And let's not even bring up microbes here. In the end, there are creatures that can outdo even the best humans at pretty much any physically intensive task that we feel like setting our minds to, no matter how hard we train and how good our genetics. But there is one thing that we can do that no other living thing can. We can use our minds to create machinery to do otherwise extremely arduous and dangerous tasks in about half an hour or while kicking back in a very comfy chair. And that's exactly what French fighter pilot Didier de Salle did when he conquered Everest in a product of human ingenuity, the Eurocopter Acurial AS350B3 helicopter. Humans won here, animals nil. Although Del Salle is the first and so far only person in history to land a helicopter on the summit of the world's highest peak, like-minded daredevils and pilots have been trying to do exactly this since at least the early 1970s. One of the most notable of these individuals is Jean Boulet, who still holds the record for the highest altitude reached by a helicopter at 40,820 feet, that's 12,442 meters. It was at this point that his engine died, although he did manage to land safely. And yes, contrary to popular belief, helicopters don't just drop like a rock when the engine dies, and in fact, they're relatively safe when they do. In fact, you have a better chance of surviving in a helicopter when the engine fails than you do in an airplane. Like Boulet before him, Del Salt broached the subject of landing a helicopter on Everest with the company he flew helicopters for, in this case, Eurocopter. Unfortunately, he was stonewalled by the Killjoy executives who didn't want to deal with the negative PR that would happen if he crashed the helicopter. Del Salt didn't let the subject drop, though, and he repeatedly badgered higher-ups within the company, using the better-than-expected results from the test of a new engine in 2004 to convince Eurocopter that landing the AS350B3 helicopter on Everest was entirely possible. The company executives finally relented and gave Del Sol some time and a helicopter to test his hypothesis. After all, while a failed attempt would create a lot of negative press, a successful one would be a fantastic marketing move, with the helicopter doing something that no one else had ever done. Or indeed, as Del Sal himself would later state, the idea was to prove to our customers all the margins they have while they're using the helicopter in the normal certified envelope, compared to what the helicopter is capable of during the flight test. Del Sal then took the helicopter and flew it to 29,500 feet, about 6,500 feet above the helicopter's listed maximum operating altitude, and around 500 feet higher than the peak of Everest. And there were no problems. After a number of additional tests proved that the helicopter would in theory have no trouble landing on Everest's peak, Del Sal and his trusty helicopter they headed to Nepal. Once there, while conducting recon on the mountain, Del Sol cemented his reputation as an all-round awesome guy by taking the time to rescue two stranded Japanese climbers. When he wasn't saving lives, he could be found jogging around the hangar in an attempt to drop every gram possible from his body weight. Likewise, he lightened the helicopter slightly by removing the passenger seats. The point of all of this was to be able to extend the flight time slightly. However, as part of the purpose of this publicity stunt was to show off what the helicopter could do, other than the marginal lightening of its load, no other modifications were made. And so it was that on the morning of May the 14th, 2005, Del Sol slipped on two pairs of thermal underwear under his flight suit and took off. As for his choice of under attire, this was needed as he flew the entire distance with his window open. He did this rather than keep things more climate controlled, as he was concerned that his windows would have iced up in the minus 31 Fahrenheit, that's minus 35 Celsius temperatures, had he not kept the temperature equalized on both sides of the glass. As for the ascent, this was not quite as easy as simply rising to the necessary altitude. La Salle had to deal with some pretty remarkable up and down drafts, which is one of the reasons even today helicopter rescues at extreme altitude on Everest are a rarity. As he stated, on one side of the mountain, on the updraft side, I wasn't able to 
approach the mountain because even taking out all of the power of the aircraft, I was still climbing. But of course, on the other side, you had the downdraft side, and on this side, even with maybe 60 knots on the airspeed indicator, I was going backward, and the helicopter at full power was not powerful enough to counteract that. Landing, or more aptly, touching down, also wasn't an easy task. He stated, When you reach the summit, you reach the updraft point, and of course the updraft winds have enough force to throw you away as soon as you put the collective down. I had to stick my skids on the summit and push into the mountain to stay on the summit. Another big problem there is that you have no visual of the summit and you have no specific clues because you are on the highest point. You are in free air, in fact, and you have to find where is the summit exactly. After keeping the skids pressed against the tiny area of land that is the summit for 3 minutes and 50 seconds, Del Sol decided it was time to go, which turned out to be quite simple thanks to the strong updraft. I just had to pull a little on the collective, and I went to flying very easily. Amusingly, nobody climbing the mountain that day had any idea Del Sol was planning on doing this, and reports later flooded in to Nepalese authorities about a random helicopter seen flying around the summit. But here's the best part. When Desal landed and went to check the recordings documenting his amazing accomplishment, the computer showed zero files where the recordings should have been. Yep, he had no hard evidence that he had actually done this, which invalidated his record attempt. Rather than waiting to see if the data could be recovered and presumably not wanting to endure doubters for any longer than absolutely necessary, Dalsal instead opted to do it all over again the very next day, this time making sure the recording equipment was functioning. It should also be noted that some of the urgency was because no one was summiting on the day in question, but were the days after. For safety reasons, he couldn't attempt to touch down if anyone was climbing the summit. If at this point you're now doubting his May the 14th story actually happens, we should probably mention that they were later able to recover the first day's logs and video, proving that he had done what he said. Of course, doubters will persist no matter if you slap them in the face with video evidence, data logs, several Everest climber accounts of spotting the helicopter flying around the summit, his helicopter skid marks that for a time existed in the snow at that hallowed peak, etc. But as for the Federation Aeronautique Internationale and a few other such official bodies, as his evidence of the two touchdowns on the summit was incontrovertible, they officially ratified his remarkable achievements, much to the chagrin of many an Everest climber who almost universally lamented the accomplishment, owing to the supposed ease at which summiting the mountain was achieved. But here again we feel compelled to point out that humans compiling the knowledge and expertise needed to design and construct a machine that was then extremely skillfully landed on this hallowed tiny patch of snow-covered land isn't actually easy at all when you think about it. And do not even get us started on what it took to compile the knowledge and expertise to make the tools that made the parts for the machine in question, or the tools that made the parts for the more advanced tools such as mind-bogglingly complex computers that were used in the whole process. One might even posit that summiting Everest in the more traditional way is orders of magnitude easier than what Del Sol did when looking at the big picture. So I really hope you enjoyed that video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for brand new videos every day of the week. Also, I've got another channel, it's called Top Tens Net. It's content very much like this one, just in a top 10 format. You can check it out through the icon on the screen now. But if you want something else to watch right now, why not check out another Today I Found Out video or a Top Tens video over there on the right. And as always, thank you for watching.